Hey guys, I got something really cool going on. This is a fantastic opportunity for actually you and I to meet and for you to hear some incredibly cool music. On Tuesday, October 1st, the Nashville guitar community is putting on a tremendous show of some of the top players. Pat Bergeson is going to be there. I had him on the show. He was mentored by Chet. Andy Wood, who's like lightning dangerous, also another guy that was on the show, plays mandolin, guitar, acoustic, he's a, a wizard. Darren Favorite, who's also on this show, second or third generation Nashville player. Matthew Lee, he actually runs a Nashville guitar community, along with Paul Johnson and John Stazella, and he is such a tremendous player. Meg Williams, up-and-coming blues star, and Terrence Downing, solid player, rocking in Nashville as well. So it's only $15 to get into this event. Again, it's Tuesday night, October 1st. The doors open at 6 p.m. The show starts at 7. It's going to be at the Analog Room at the Hutton Hotel in Nashville. And I think that's on West End Avenue. Tons of gear giveaways from Wampler, Eminence Speakers, GuitarEFX.com, BTPA Cables, Lucky Dog Guitars, Groon Guitar Store, Morgan Amps, and Vaughn Scow. Pre-sale tickets. Go to the Nashville Community Group on Facebook and they'll have something for you there. And they also have videos of previous performers at this show on their YouTube channel. The other really cool thing is these guys have been kind enough to invite me to be the guest MC of the event, and I will certainly love to meet you if you listen to the show. Please come up, say hello. It's going to be a great night. Tons of cool guests, really good musicians. So come on down. Show starts at 7 at the Analog Room at the Nashville Hutton Hotel. All right, I will see you Tuesday night, October 1st. Be there. Aloha. If you want to buy or sell a home or investment property and you're here in the Tampa Bay area, in Hillsborough, Pinellas, or Pasco counties, then listen up. West Florida Real Estate is a local residential real estate broker that's helped over 250 Bay Area homeowners buy and sell their properties in the last four years alone. If you're looking to sell, you'll want to get their free report, The 7 Biggest Mistakes Homeowners Make When Hiring a Realtor. And if you're looking to buy a property, you definitely want to get your hands on The 21 Most Expensive Mistakes Tampa Home Buyers Make When Buying a Home. Each one of these reports is going to save you time and money. Inside, you'll discover the 7 Most Important Things to Consider When Hiring a Realtor, what to do if you're buying and selling a home at the same time, and the danger of choosing a realtor who agrees with everything you say. To get your hands on these free reports, head on over to WestFloridaRealEstate.com. That's WestFloridaRealEstate.com. If you're a business owner and you want to increase your cash flow, or if you're a label or artist and you want to promote new music, then listen up. For information about advertising on Everyone Loves Guitar, including information on geographically targeted ads, go to EveryoneLovesGuitar.com forward slash advertise. That's EveryoneLovesGuitar.com forward slash advertise hey this is craig if you like this show and you want to support it and you want to keep it free head on over to everyone loves guitar.com forward slash support that's everyone loves guitar.com forward slash support hey everybody this is craig garber welcome to everyone loves guitar and we have a friend of the show back with us freshly shaved christian martucci there you go man i I love his hair man it's like i want to come and pet you (laughs) <laughs> um <laughs> nothing no comment <laughs> um hey christian is with uh stone sour and black star riders and his interview was just put out when you're hearing this probably about a month or so ago if you haven't heard it go back and check it out it was a really good interview got tons of good feedback and he's an awesome guy as a human being and he's a great player as well so he's got a new record out it's fantastic it's called negative balance it's his it's that's your this is your first solo record right that i'm aware of yes. their solo record he's aware of all right it's a really good record man it's got a great combination of everything and we'll talk about it um what what made you put this out now because you've been a musician your whole life well you know a, a couple of things um i was um in the middle of it. I, I just got like this jolt of uh writing whatever it just kind of hit me and um uh, and as I was coming up with this stuff, it was almost like, um, I, I don't, you know, this, the, there was this guy that asked me to, um, do a book deal. Right. And 
I kind of turned it down because I didn't feel like I could be a hundred percent honest while some people are still alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very ta- that was very tactful, man. You know, that well, was really cool. well, man, you know, I, I try not to judge people on their actions from, you know, 25 years ago. And I try to judge them for the people they are today. Sure. You know? Yeah. man. Um, so anyway, it, it brought up all of these um, sort of, uh, I guess, I guess feelings is what you call them. And, yeah. Guess uh, so. Guess so, Christian. I don't know. I just, these songs kind of, they're kind of a throwback to where, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to say back in the 90s when I just wasn't good enough to say it. Yeah. What do you mean good enough? You mean good enough uh, musically? I just didn't have the maturity I think when I was in, in my younger punk bands and stuff, I mean, that I, you know, I like some of the stuff that came out from back then, some of the output, but I mean, for the most part, um, I just wasn't, I just wasn't really ready to be a songwriter yet. You know, I totally I don't, get that. You, do. you write a bunch of stuff and then eventually you find your stride and you just kind of, that's why I try to tell people, don't be discouraged if you write lousy songs because you're going to write a lot of lousy songs before you start writing good songs yeah man with the exception of like the beatles <laughs> but everybody else yeah yeah but you know i think that the thing that really helped them was they were playing like eight hours a night and um playing covers uh, yeah. for eight hours a night for years before they uh you know sort of started writing their own songs so yeah. i think it maybe in, in their case obviously it, it helped yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, but dude, every song on here is really good. Honestly, I mean, I have uh, f- uh, out of the the uh, six songs, five of them are four stars, and they got a five star here, man. I mean, this is like a great, solid. I mean, who who puts out a first album like that? Not many people. Thanks, man. <laughs> no, it's great. Are you kidding me? And I'm not even a. Honestly, I'm. This isn't like my, my number one genre. You know, it's more punk. I'm more of a, like a blues guy. And I dug every song on here. It was freaking great. Really right. good, man. So thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I mean, one thing I I, I really didn't want it to sound like a um a, a like a modern sort of like heavy metal kind of production or whatever. Where everything is like super gridded and all of that kind of stuff. I, I wanted it to be more of a, of a natural thing with more natural classic rock guitar tones as opposed to, to metal tones or, you know, whatever else. So, I mean, it's just me. I mean, no, that's, that's, it came across just like that, man. Very classic rock. Very, in fact, there's a first, first email I saw. I said, holy shit, I'm listening to this. It's like uh, classic rock metal but not sound it was classic rock tone you know metal punk is like everything and you're singing well that's kind of like what i was saying like if i could have put out something um (laughs) you know back then i think you know it would have sounded like this you know because i mean it's like really a combination of like um you know the the punk rock the hardcore stuff the metal stuff i was into at the time and the classic rock stuff and i just kind of threw them all in a blender and I mean, I can say whatever. I didn't, I honestly, I didn't think about any of this stuff. I just sat down and started playing this stuff. And for, I, for whatever reason, it's it, it, uh, like the mood hit me or something where it was just like, I'm going to keep going with this. I ended up writing a lot more songs too, but I, I narrowed it down to um, the ones that I put on the EP because I didn't want to have anything on there that was um, in danger of crossing over and the my other two bands you know? I totally get that um, uh, i never ask about titles because everybody asks about titles but negative balance is a really cool title so i gotta ask you about it um well um to be honest with you man we were uh um stone sour was on tour uh somewhere we were in europe somewhere and um i went to use my uh my card for something (laughs) (laughs) and it said you had a negative balance i was like i can't believe this i'm on this giant tour and i i have a uh, i have a negative balance in my account and i was laughing about it and then i was like you know what that'd be a cool name for a punk band i said to Corey, and he started laughing and he was like yeah it would be and so um our 
initially I thought about doing it as like a band thing, but then it just, I'm like, I'm not going to start a new band right now. You know, I'll just put it out as myself and I'll title it negative balance. Cause I thought it was funny. And also I named it that because, um, because, uh, I, I had to do everything myself. I had to record it myself. I had to mix it myself. I had to do all of those things. So, I mean, um, so yeah, you know, it was really a, a labor of love, which, you know, doesn't really, um, that doesn't always pay the bills, but it is what it is. This is what you can do with a negative balance, people. Dude, let me tell you, this is, I can't believe you did all the mastering in the engineering. What, uh, so you play everything on here, even drums? Uh, no, I um I I laid down the initial um like the scratch tracks or mm-hmm. whatever, and I sent them to my friend Carl Rockfist, who's the drummer in Michael Monroe's band, and he was in Danzig and a bunch of other stuff. He's based in Sweden, and uh, he's an old old friend of mine. And uh, we were in a band called the Chelsea Smiles together years and years ago. You mentioned him on in, during your interview, because I mean, that, that was such a badass name, Carl Rockfist. You sound like it fucked somebody up, man. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a big fella. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he, uh, so I sent him the track, and he sent me back the drum tracks, and I was like, well, now I have to do it because he sent me back just these incredible, um, just these perfect drum tracks um, that he recorded with his friend, um, and. Um, it just sounded great. So I, I laid down all the guitar tracks. I was like, man, who am I going to get to play bass on this? And as I said, you know, a lot of these songs were kind of, I was in a nineties mood, you know, like where I was at that time and stuff. And, you know, the guy I was in a band with at that time, it's a guy named AC Slade, who uh, is a member of the Misfits now. And he was in Joan Jett and the Black Hearts and all that stuff. But we all started out together kind of. So, um, I was like, yo, dude, you want to play bass on some, on some stuff? And I was like, I promise it's not terrible, you know? <laughs> and he didn't care. He was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And um, so that's what happened. And that's why I ended up using, um, you know, I ended up including all three of us on the album cover to give it more of like a sort of band vibe and stuff. But um, yeah, it was cool. I mean, I basically did everything myself. The only thing I had help with was my friend, uh, my friend Jonah Nimoy, um, he, uh, he's actually, he's a great musician, a uh, great artist. He's, he's actually, maybe I shouldn't say, he's Leonard Nimoy's grandson. I was wondering, because that's like not a common name. I was thinking. Oh, so, I mean, uh, you know, his name's on the right, you know, he drew the album cover and everything. It's a very cool cover. I had him help me with some of the, um, with some of the, uh, like the vocal melodies, because I'm just not really, you know. I mean, I can I can sing stuff that's already written, but when it comes to coming up with stuff, sometimes I have a hard time because I can't get the guitar out of my brain. Um, you know, so I'll I'll follow the guitar exactly or something. But no, I, I can understand that. So on a few of the songs, I basically had him sort of like steer me in the right direction, and um, and but you know, some of the stuff was was just all me, you know. Um, or he would give me a melody and I would write lyrics to it, that kind of thing. Um, so it definitely helps to know your strengths and weaknesses when you're uh, doing stuff. And oftentimes collaborating is really the way to go, you know? Um, so, yeah. So there's that. But yeah, uh, he really helped out a lot with the artwork and with everything else. So, um, you know, big thanks to Jonah. <laughs> there you go. No, or as we say, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, how did you, how did you feel about, about singing? Because this is you, you did all the vocals here, man, and you are not a lead singer, and your vocals are great. I mean, really good. Um, you know, I used to sing in my other bands when I was younger and stuff, but it was always out of it was always by uh, sort of like default or something. It was like it was like, well, we can't find a singer, so you're gonna do it. And, <laughs> Um, there was a time when I actually could sing pretty well, you know, <laughs> when I was younger and, uh, I just, I kind of lost the drive for it over the years. Um, but, uh, it was cool revisiting it, man. It was cool sitting down and being like, wow, man, um, you know, this isn't, 
this is a lot more natural than I I thought it would be, you know. It, honestly, man, it's your voice sounded great on the whole record, man. It, really good. It was like I said, it's really weird when you meet somebody under one context. Like I didn't meet you as a as a music I'm a musician, but I didn't meet you in the context of as a performer. So you have like a very intense conversation, and I know your voice right and you have a really unique voice and i'm hearing you sing I'm like wow that's really it's hard to 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 envision because i don't hear your voice like that i uh, yeah i don't know i yeah. can't I, I have no idea where it comes from man it's just a, I, I get into the music and i just let it rip you know <laughs> dude i'm i'm thinking tour. for better or worse you know there we, been we need a tour we need a tour of this man I'd, I'd love to someday, man, but I think it's going to take time. I think, um, I think I'm kind of just putting this out now to sort of test the waters and maybe give people, a, um, like a heads up that this might be something I might pursue later on or whatever. But right now I just, I can't see, I can't see past the black star writers tour even enough to, um, if I see where there would be time to do it, you know? Yeah, I totally get it. But I'm thinking you opening up for the Misfits would be a good match. You know, I never thought of that. <laughs> uh, wanna, <laughs> are you a manager or you're hired? Because <laughs> I just saw they're doing a bunch of shows, aren't they? Yeah. yeah I, just, I don't think I would. I, I just don't see how it would work out. I mean, the drummers in, in Stockholm, you know the other guys actually in the mess. <laughs> right, right, right. No, yeah. I don't know. Um, but I think that'd be cool, you know. Um, I'm not sure how many uh how many people I would bring. <laughs> oh no, dude, it'd be awesome. It'd be cool. Did, did you so you recorded everything on so everybody did their part separately and then you put them all together in your home studio? Yeah. There was um, you know, once I had the drum tracks and I got them back and I listened to them and I realized that like they weren't um stiff yeah you know, like it didn't sound like a sterile uh no sort of, far no far from it well here's the click track and here's what i'm gonna do like he played exactly to to my guitar scratch track and um and you know so there's some push and pull and um it just it felt really good and i i think i've come i think that too comes from us uh being in a band together for so long and having played together, we kind of know how each other play, you know, and yeah. it's the same with AC. I mean, even though we haven't been in a band together since way back when you just, I don't know, man, you have chemistry with people or you don't. And I thought it was really cool um, to uh, sort of tell my story in a sense and an EP with people that actually lived through it with me. Yeah, that is really cool. That was cool. <laughs> I'm, yeah. a deep, I'm, a, I'm a deep person. You, you are can. a deep person, man. That's why I like you so much, to be honest with you, man. We had a really good conversation, which, which I, you know, the musicians in general tend to lean towards that way. Yeah, or, man. Or, I don't know, at least, I mean, it can't be just the ones that I've met. I mean, it's got to be, you know, although people refer people then that are similar to them but you know so there's some of the vetting process but yeah musicians in general are pretty deep which is great yeah i mean i think it takes um it definitely takes a special kind of idiot to <laughs> <laughs> to do that for <laughs> uh what did you learn from the whole process of putting the record together uh man a lot uh you know i'd never mixed anything before so that was a there was a few learning curves there and then uh, just like everything else it starts it becomes a thing of like the less you add the better it sounds you know? <laughs> so um i ended up piling all this all this crap on the mix or whatever and systematically just started taking it off until it sounded uh it sounded right um you know um so learned a lot about that i also learned that um you know you can't um it, you can't expect um and i didn't but i mean you you really can't expect your status if you're in a if you're in a bigger band or something like that you can't expect that to cross over into a solo project you know as much as you you think you're entitled to that as much as you think you know it's um 
you just got to, you know, I mean, so I guess going into it with the, un- with the understanding that like, look, nobody's going to help me. None of these people are going to, you know, lift a finger, you know, whatever. But the good thing about the way that music is um, released nowadays, you know, um, and, you know, I mean, there's arguments, very, um, very legitimate arguments on both sides. But I mean, the thing is, it's like if you, uh, the Spotify's and the Apple Music's and all of that stuff, they kind of are in a sense like um, what a traditional record label used to be in some ways. It's like they, you put your stuff out there and it goes around the world and whatever, and you're responsible for uh, letting people know it's out there. So you can either do that with a publicist or, you know, that's what a record label would do. Or if you don't... In theory, yeah. Yeah, or you just... um you just put it out there and roll the dice and, you know, share it on social media and all that stuff and just hope that a couple of people will pick up on it or whatever. I mean, again, you know, I didn't do this to um, necessarily like launch a solo career where I'm just going to, you know, hop in a van with my two friends and expect them to (laughs) travel around the country with me for free. Um, So We'll just see what happens with it. I'm really happy with the way it came out. I'd like to do another one when there's time, and I'm I most likely will, you know. And um, that's really I'm happy to hear that. At that point, we'll see where we're at. You know, if there's some kind of demand for me to go play shows, whether it's in the U.S. or if it's overseas, you know, um, I'd be happy to do it. But um, I just uh, I don't see that in the immediate future. But you know. Um, I'm really happy for you that you did this because you, I, I was shocked that you just said this is the first time you've ever mixed anything. The mixing on here is really great. I mean, it's very clean. Well, I had some, I, I had some, um, you know, <laughs> I, I have to, I actually have to thank Jay Rustin a lot. The guy that um, he produced, he produces like Anthrax and Monomarth. He did Stone Sour's last album and the black star writers album so i i have people that i can call and that's great questions to i try not to abuse it too much because you know not everybody wants to give away their secrets but some guys are just super cool about it you know jay is uh you know not only a great friend but he uh, he <laughs> he puts up with my irritating questions you know which is super cool and uh you know I haven't taken any advice from him that didn't make something sound better. So, but you're a guy, you're a guy that people would want to help. You're very humble. You're very like, just the fact that you're aware of, Hey man, I would really appreciate your help. I do not in any fashion want to, you know, in any way exploit you or like be a dick about, you know, when people know, or approach things like that, I'm sure you're the same way if a younger musician approaches you, you know, the, the person that's really like just acknowledging, Hey, whatever you're open to doing, I really appreciate it. That's a person you want to help. But but the guy that's like, comes at you like, you know, sort of like entitled, it's like, man, that's not the person you want to help at all. Yeah. You know, I mean, I reached out to, you know, um, a couple of people, you know, and i was you know definitely not looking for a free ride you know and i was like you know i'll, I'll uh you know uh, i'll pay you to do this or whatever you know what i mean and i just it just uh, you know i i kind of realized early on in the in this project that i was on my own yeah and I, really, I i i the thing is i understand that you know what i mean yeah i do i know exactly what you mean music business is not something that um people are are excited about taking chances with (laughs) i mean they go for the sure thing it's yeah yeah um so um you know on the flip side it's not like it was back in the day where if you couldn't get a record deal you were hopeless right you can still get your stuff out there you know i mean um it's just a matter of uh you know, letting people know that it's out there, but that's why I'm fortunate enough to have a platform where people care enough about me to follow me. So, yeah. um, 
I'm, I'm just going straight to the source. You know what I mean? Like it's, that's what it's there for, man. Yeah. You that's know? what it's there for, you know? And I'm really glad to hear that you to, to hear you say you're going to do another one because the, for a first record to be this clean and well put together and it, you know, it, it did exactly what you wanted it to do. I'm really happy because the second one, you know, would be, I could see the, the, uh, the, what you got out of this, you know, is very apparent and I'm happy that you want to do another one because I think something will come out of this and you know, it's nothing's a guarantee for anything or any of us. Right. But if you do nothing, then is a guarantee that nothing will happen. Right. right. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Too. Yeah. I don't know. Like there's some cool songs on here, you know, maybe yeah, really cool songs up in a video game or something like that. It's like, you never know, you know what I mean? But if you didn't put it out, uh, you can be, you know, rest assured that nothing is going to happen with it. Yeah. So let's put it out see what see what happens see what you know. well let me let's talk about uh my favorite song on the record which is bad ghosts mm. which thank you for correcting my misinterpretation <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of the lyrics what's the back the, you said you got some uh it's like a rockabilly punk blues on that man you got some really good slide guitar what, oh yeah well um the um the slide guitar on that is um is uh my friend joel who um he uh he plays in in pearl's band um and pearl is uh she's well she's meatloaf's daughter she's scotty Ann's wife and she's an extremely uh talented uh singer not just for she does like a california country kind of thing uh -huh. and uh but she does it really well and it's cool great. and um so so he did the he did the pedal steel on that um and uh the drums on that that's the only song that coral isn't on the drums on that are actually dave run and dave is the drummer for me first and the gemmy gemmies and also lag wagon so um and we were in a band together years ago so yeah i um i thought it would be kind of cool i like some albums where um at the very end of it someone will throw you a curveball like there's um like legacy of brutality from the misfits and you gotta listen to this song when um what's it called we get off of here but there's a song at the very end of it called american nightmare and it's this amazing rockabilly song like it, when you listen to it it sounds like something that was recorded at sun records or something <laughs> um because a big part of my um a big part of my musical background as i love blues and i love old country music and i love rockabilly so i wanted to put a song on there that sort of um encompassed all of those things but didn't sound like a direct ripoff like if it's um you know it's still very fast and it's kind of aggressive for yeah what it is, you know um so that song is about um more or less just um you know um when I was a kid, I did a lot of crazy things and all of that stuff, like, you, do, you know, and it was about wanting to break away from, from, uh, being not a bad guy, but just, you know, uh, <laughs> not being the most desirable human on the planet. You know, it's like, you're trying to get away from that and you're trying to be a better person, but there's always somebody that comes along that, um, kind of tries to pull you back into where you were you know um it's like it's like if you're on drugs or something you know it's you know somebody gets off heroin and then they run into one of their old buddies that's yeah that's using it and next thing you know you know they're <laughs> on their way to the hospital you know yeah. so that's kind of what that song's about um it's about just um you know trying to just trying to stay on the trying to stay on track and you know all these people from your past are coming back and trying to you know um, all the bad ghosts exactly dude i really like that um and good ones and there's bad ones you know <laughs> um what's really funny is that um i always say that you're more attracted to people f for me it's been my experience for the dysfunctions you have in common than for the and like i'm always i'm I wouldn't say I'm obsessed, but I'm, I'm trying to 
exercise some of the things I did as a younger person. Right. And so I'm hearing you say that and it's like, cause I, you know, I like you, we have a good vibe. Right. And it's funny that like, that's, a, I hear this a lot from the people that I vibe well with. We're all like, you know, just, just trying to get, you know, move on, you know, and just make some things right. Yeah, man. That's why I'm just saying like, you know, stay away from me. Let me, uh, like, <laughs> that's cool that you still want to be like, uh, <laughs> that you still want to act like a teenager and, you know, do crazy, yeah. like steal cars and stuff, but I'm not doing that. You know yeah, what I, mean? yeah. I totally get it, man. I definitely get it. Grew up with some characters, man. Mm. And I love them all to death. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, I'm not knocking them in the song or anything. I'm just saying, you know, like, no, it's not your journey anymore, man. You do what you do. Just don't try to pull me into it. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it, man. <laughs> trying, to, trying to lead a, lead a, a respectable life here. <laughs> man, you're doing it. You're doing a real good job. You know what, too? Um, and I'm not blowing smoke. You were saying, you mentioned something in passing about, I didn't want this to sound Sorry. like other people's stuff. And that is the one thing about this, man. It sounds like this is not anything recycled in the least. I mean, this is really fresh sounding and that's, what's unusual about it because, you know, I mean, anything fresh sounding is unusual nowadays. Right. But this is really, this is like fresh sounding music. That's kind of like in a genre that's was more popular back in the day, like in the nineties, like just like you're saying it, but it sounds fresh. It doesn't sound like any of that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like I said, it was like, it was one of those things where I felt like I had unfinished business from back then. That's the second record, man. Yeah. Unfinished well, business. I already got a title for the there, second one. There you go. What is it? Do you have it? It's not un I'm not going to I'm not going to announce it yet. Because... No, no. You got to put a song on there, Unfinished Business. That's a good wow. title too. Oh, there's probably a lot of songs with that name. Best way to get God to laugh at you is to announce. Tell them your plans. Yeah, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Some famous person said that. <laughs> well, your your tone is great on the record. What guitar and what amp were you playing through mostly? You know, uh, that whole record is my is my um, my Dean V on on the left side. Mm. And, um, um, I have a um a, a USA Dean Thoroughbred that I actually put a P ninety in, which is on this side, and um. The solos are either the P90 guitar or the or the V. Um, the uh, the amp I used on it was my same uh, JCM 800 that I've used since I was a kid. On the left side and on the right side is a old Plexi. Hmm. Um, uh, I think the solos, if I remember correctly, were the Marshall with the um, what do you call it the uh, that echo plex booster mm. um, you know guys like jemmy page and stuff used to use way back when or whatever but i have like the newer version of it or whatever and it it, it, it does a fine job <laughs> your tone was great kids this is how you get good tones a jcm 800 and a plexi N yeah. nothing miss yeah. no mystery you man overdrive pedal. you have to have a super overdrive pedal you don't have to but i mean it's the difference between like uh it, it just gives it that little extra, little extra bit of kick ass. Sounded great. The tone was really good throughout the whole thing. Really consistent. Do, do you have, do you have a favorite song? Oh man. Um, I think in, uh, let me look at them. I can't even remember what's on this thing. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I believe me. I get it. I, I do. You know, I like, I, I think bad ghosts, the one that you really like is yeah. probably, overall the best song i've ever written and actually that one i had no outside help with that one i just sat down and wrote that song and under like five minutes it just poured out you know so that's cool i like that one a lot i like black dust a lot i like um i like them all man you know man that's to say, really happy to what the favorite is i mean nothing in the dark i think is a really cool song and i, I kind of like it because it's like <laughs> it's uh I think it's the only song on there that doesn't have a guitar solo. Yeah. The whole, the whole record's great, and I would really like everybody to listen to it. It's called Negative Balance by Christian Martucci. It's it's really cool. It's it's um 
six songs. It's an EP, 17 minutes long. It's very um, Ramones-like in its presentation, but it doesn't sound like the Ramones at all. But it's very uh, Ramones-ish ethos, as I was telling Christian. And it's really cool. The tone is great. If you're into guitar, you'll love it. And uh, Christian's a great fucking guy. So, so support his music, right? Thanks a lot. <laughs> great welcome, welcome, guy, support his <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh dude i really appreciate this music you put out i would love to see the next one not that i'm it's like when you just had a baby or when you have another one i'm not right i'm not been like that. i'm just saying this is really great and i know it was your first record so i hope you're gonna do the second one because if the first one came out this good and i know how yeah, intense you are you know only good things are gonna come from this you know man all, all i can say is i i i really appreciate the uh the help I mean, I was, um, it makes me feel good that I was able to get these, uh, interviews and things like that without, you know, having to have like a, a publicist and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just one-on-one -on -one, man. No, you know, man. It's, very, you know, it's, I like how everything's very do it yourself with this thing. It's, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm allergic to publicists to be honest with you. I'm, I, something happened yesterday. I'm sitting here and within the span, I really don't work with publicists with very rare exception, just because I like, I, I like this, you know. Oftentimes the people that work for the, for the artists, and I'm not saying, you know, I mean, there's always exceptions, but there's so many of them that act like bigger rock stars than the people that they're working for. They're like fucking mall cops. I just don't understand how they stick around as long as they do and they move up and they do. It's, it's really crazy. It's and like, I've, it's it, like, okay, you're taking credit for all this. It's like, which songs on the album did you write? <laughs> I, dude, I've had publicists call me and say, Hey, uh, do you want to have this person on your show? And I was like, no, now I don't, I almost never talk to any of them. Um, just because it's just not nothing against them. It's just not what I want to do. And I'm like, no, thank you. But you know, you have this person here. Um, and I'd like to, to talk to him or her and like, well, if you interview this person that you just told me you didn't want to interview, I'll get you an interview that one. And I'm like, I'm just such the wrong guy to do that with. I'm like, I don't care who the, f I mean, no, don't, that's just not cool. You know, I hate trying to be manipulated, man. You could tell me no, I'm okay with that. Yeah, man, it's, it's I don't know. <laughs> it's I, don't know what, I don't know what people's trips are. I'm just glad that I'm <laughs> not part of it. You know? I know, man. Well, you got a, a open door here, man. Whenever you want. So you got something else coming out. We'll put it out, launch it, and, and freaking support it, man. Because you're a badass. You're a good guy, and you're a very good musician. So, and I appreciate all the effort and sincerity you put into your music and your life. So there you go, man. But I'm pumped. Now we got to hug. We got to give each other a hug somehow. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a lot of fun, man. I appreciate it. And Honestly, my pleasure. Very nice of you to uh, take a take a liking to something that's not of my two obvious bands. You know. No, man, this is good. I took the liking. I took to you as a human being, man, and you happened to put out a great record. So there you go. Ain't hard. And then you know. Ain't hard. Maybe when I get older, I can uh, just just put out my own stuff and you know have, have fun with it you know you know anytime if i'm around your door's open so this is what i want to say in summary first of all christian martucci he's awesome if you didn't hear his last interview listen to it he's great um if you are anywhere where black star, black star riders, riders or stone or sour stone, well, stone sour is going to be closed for a while but anywhere black star riders go see him christian's a phenomenal guitar player and um he's really prof he's really professional it takes what he does he's got a, a great great work ethic that's that's what i like too man you know i always like the guys that are like you know that's what it's about you know take take pride of ownership in what you do because that's important yeah. and uh and buy his record or at least listen to it on the streaming services, but like listen to it a lot. So maybe you can get some traction on it and other people listen to it. It's called Negative Balance. Really cool record. Cool record. It rocks. And I think you should listen to it and you'll like it. Any uh, final words, man? Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Listen, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please share it on your social media channels. We appreciate your support. Check out Christian Martucci and Negative Balance. Enjoy it. Let me know what you think of it. Let Christian know what you think of it. Hit him up on social media. He's got a pretty big 
Instagram presence. What what is it? What's your what's your is it just Christian Martucci? No. Yep. Yep. Oh, it is. Got real creative with that one. Yeah. Awesome. No, everybody's got no. I was like, cause everybody I talked to is like, um, it's. Uh, well, I see all these people with these rad names and stuff, and I'm like, man, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. No, but it's easy to find you, Christian Martucci, from a marketing standpoint, right? You know, you know, you need to, you need to, you know, you're the dude, man. Yeah. Um, so go to look for Christian Martucci. That's easy enough on uh, Instagram. He's got a really good account. He's always posting cool stuff up there. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Make sure you go to everyonelovesguitar.com. Sign up to get on our newsletter list so you and I can connect. And most important, don't forget, remember that happiness is a choice. So choose wisely. Be nice. Go play your guitar. Listen to Christian's album, Negative Balance, and have fun. Till next time, peace and love, everybody. I'm out. Thank you again, brother. <laughs>